Hello there everyone and welcome to the start of a new campaign in Kaiser Reich in which we're playing as everyone's favorite Argentina, the blue Argentina, for now. Uh, but we've got to talk about the status of Argentina. Now if you'd like to skip ahead and not hear me read about this, please go to like probably the 3 or 4 minute mark. By the early 20th century, Argentina was enjoying a booming and fast growing economic prowess based on its meat and cereal exports. Immigrants from all over Europe flooded towards a republic and vigorous entrepreneurship and a nascent industry quickly propelled Argentina forward as one of the most prosperous nations on the planet. Trade relations were secure and exports to the UK and Germany kept increasing. When the Valkyrie Tower struck, Argentina was forced into neutrality unwilling to side with either its most important economic partner, the UK, or its second most important one, Germany. By steering between the two, sanctions were brought down by the British enforcing an embargo on trade with Germany, while Argentina tried circumventing this by sailing through third countries. The sales were not the same and the pre-Valkyrie miracle slowed down. In the last years of the Valkyrie approach, it became apparent to the UK that it was fighting a losing fight in order the Argentinian government and companies to ramp up production and exploit the nation to its fullest. Discontent with increased demand and sick of British exploitation, the workers started to organize, protest, and finally rise up in an armed revolt. Unable to fully contain the situation, the control of the Argentinian government on the uprisings went from bad to worse, and by the mid-20s, Argentina had lost, most co lost control of Santa Cruz, Chubut, and New Rio Negro provinces to the newly reformed Frente Obrero Patagonico. Three sub subsequent democratically elected governments were tasked with solving the crisis, but failed one after another. In response to inca incapacity to rule, General Eduardo rose up in 1930 to attempt a crushing the revolt. A reign of terror spread across the nation with socialists and syndicalists sympathizers massacred and pushed southwards. His dictatorship is, however, short-lived as he dies from cancer two years later, forming a power vacuum once more uh, no large-scale intervention in the south. Very well. Uh, elections are written out and throughout the election fraud. The pan under Roca successfully takes power, prompting a slow recovery from Uruburu's dictatorship and changing attitude towards the FOP, Patagonian Workers Front. Small skirmishes in the FOP territory are launched uh, and the Navy successfully retakes the Isla Grande uh, Tierra del Fuego. <clears throat> Intervention from Chile, however, stops the government from achieving victory and temporarily ends the conflict with the FOP. Well, in 1935, rumors started surfacing that Roca may be attempting to end the conflict and leave the FOP alone. Our edge across the nation interrupts. Enabling the Liga Patriotica under Manuel Carles to uh, gain the support they need, culminating in the Christmas coup, supported by the Navy and various el military elements. Carles' coup, the, the government on Christmas 1935, takes control of the capital region and starts solidifying his hold on the nation. On the 1st of January 1936, Carles, uh, still in the midst of attempted coup with success far from certain, aside from the Buenos Aires capital region and a few small inland provinces, his control is nil. Support from the ARA or Argentinian Armada is guaranteed, but many of his military commanders in the army doubt Carl's uh, potential and are organizing to put it down as cool. Very well. Found it. Uh, I'm going to say this wrong. Uh, this also auto completed. This is already completed before we, when we started, so. Um, found the Gendarmerie. To better control the discontent of provinces and secure rapid response force, should the situation escalate, we should consider the creation of an Argentine National Gendarmerie, placed directly under the Defense Minister's command to crack, to crack down on rebelling provinces, control the judiciaries. Due to the high number of rebels and cynical sympathizers in a nation, full control of the judicial system could persuade the judges to crack down quicker than the criminals. Gendarmeria Nacional Argentina. With questionable support from the army and limited manpower of the IRA, a debate has arisen out of the capabilities of our internal strike force. According to the Argentine constitution, the armed forces can technically not intervene in internal civil conflicts. So the Gendarmerie will be created as an organ subordinate to the defense ministry and thus the Carl's cabinet. It will be defined as a civilian security force of a military nature and maintain a functional relationship with the Ministry of Defense as part of both the national defense system and the interior security system. It would therefore maintain capabilities arising from the demands required by joint military planning with the armed forces and would legally be able to intervene in the current crisis, however. Our funds are limited at this time and the loyalty of the new recruits would be questionable at best, which has made Carlos reconsider the proposal to develop the possibility of a counter coup from within his own ranks. Found the GNA? Ooh. Do a situation on Well, right now we're, we're looking pretty bad. We do have a cup of coffee or two, though. But a good control over Argentina. Oh boy. Inner service robbery, Navy dominant, of course. Military cliques. And woes of the Christmas coup are god awful. Yeah. Secure the military apparatus. Since we only have the loyalty of the ARA and LP militias for now, we should convince the garrisons of militia outposts to join our side and cast aside the democratic forces until we can get enough influence to sway the Argentine army in our favor. Now we have no political power. How great! And the collapse of the nations all over Europe out of the Valkyrie and the rising tension between the socialist bloc of the international and the rest of Europe has given rise to an increased level of immigration towards a great nation. Further the crises throughout the continent could even further boost these numbers and could prove an opportunity to further boost our population. To attract new immigrants daily or directly, we should end the la long-lasting civil war first. Projected immigration report for 1936, 100%. <clears throat> we have a total core population of 13 million. That's not very much. That's really not very much. 
Oh boy, Kaiser Rex is a little slow, but that's okay. Because I literally have nothing else running at the time of this recording, so. Let's see. Let's see. Scavenger, Enrique Mosconi, and this guy is Pedro Eugenio. Intervention in the judiciary branch, though. <laughs> During the early years of the 20th century, our nation started to slowly move away from the old authoritarian systems towards a more open and democratic system by changes to the Constitution and implementation of checks and balances. Subsequent separatism in Patagonia, a continued corruption in government, and the shady dealings of the conservative ruling party, however, have stumped our progress and kept the old system alive and striving. Not only has this led to great disgruntlement among the people, it also created a hotbed for Carl's supporters who claim the high court is obstructing popular will. With Carl's and supporters now in control of the high court, it's given him the perfect opportunity to strike uh, the defunct system by relieving all five members of the court from their duties and replacing them by his men of the people. We can, however, push further our narrative and start replacing the lower courts as well with their followers, although this might backfire greatly should the people turn sides. Sure, why not? Consolidate the GBA Capital Region. Even though the capital is the first city to fall to the boots of the LP and the ARA, Buenos Aires is a megalopolis, spanning from the Tigre River and the old city of uh, Berazategui, getting a huge problem for us since various cells of loyalists to the old government still remain scattered throughout the region, thwart thwarting thus far all attempts by our forces to eradicate them. Yeah, we have a single division, a marine, uh, which makes sense for basically how the coup happened. Uh, Black Monday, oh boy, well, since we're not even treating with them, we shouldn't have us that much, right? Better go into resistance? Oh boy. <laughs> illegitimate Republic. Yeah, you bet it's illegitimate. Yeah. Let's see what happens. I have no idea what's going to happen in this campaign, but... Wow. A white hungry. That looks very weird to me. Who are you? When is hungry going to ever get a focus tree? Why did, why did he never get a focus tree? Carl. Snowden. Military apparatus. <coughs> Control the railroads. All railways in Argentina led to Buenos Aires, which places us in a unique position to quickly lash out and call forces rallying around the country. Sabotage and rebel forces, however, greatly damage these tracks and will need to be crushed. And the main railway hubs of Pergamo, Pergamino, Pergamino, Bahia Blanca, and Rosario have to be secured before we move on. Diplomatic restrict civil rights. Seize this little garrison. So. Not bad. Black money hit the nation. When the German market opened this morning, oh, look at that. and the stock suddenly started plummeting, our nation was one of the first to be hit by the new wave. In response to the Berlin Stock Exchange, uh, Bolsa de Comercio de Buenos Aires collapsed as well, causing even more trouble for Carlos, who's barely, barely able to hold on to power. Our nation's in a spiral back luck. Are we still trading with them? It doesn't seem like it. Um, we won't even be able to. Actually, we're, we have 11 cities to work with. Actually, that's not bad. Clash of the Colegio Militar de la, de la Nación. As one of the last strongholds in the greater Buenos Aires region, the CMN was occupied by loyalist members of this military who barricaded themselves inside the compound awaiting reinforcements from the interior. In response to the last ditch effort, soldiers of the ARA were sent in to try to push them out. While small clashes occurred throughout the compound, the army surrendered a week later when the basic utilities and will to hold out had started to fade. Among the captured were a few notable army commanders, but it seemed that the majority of the staff had fled the city during the first days of the coup. The victory may be insignificant in the greater picture, but we now firmly control the entirety of Buenos Aires. Carlos expands control of the country. Sure, why not? Closure of the Bolsa de Comercio. The stocks continue to plummet investors all around the nation panicking. We could close the stock exchange and demand the banks to refuse to pay out desperate assistance. This will buy us some more time to fix the disaster while folks in the political affairs, however. The population should not appreciate it. Close it. Well, it seems like we'd have to... Uh, cabinet, of course. Well, Tucuman? Political control. We definitely have to get there fast. First five year plan. Um, Buy some more time to fix the disaster. Close it. Close it for now. Expand railways, economic control. We'll see. I don't know. I have no like, exact uh, idea which way I want to go for this campaign, but temporary restrict civil rights. The Constitution uh, conflicts with various points of our policies and should temporarily be suspended until this crisis is over. While we're expecting heavy resistance to the decision, it would be in our favor of our great nation. Fight for the Estacion Altario. As the primary railway hub of our nation, the city of Buenos Aires plays a key role in connecting the vast walls of land of our country. Most of the northern railroads have passed through Rosario, um, which has not yet uh, declared its allegiance to Carlos and may prove a thorn in our side during the northern campaign. Our troops are currently finishing up the loyalist remnants in the Estacion. 
Estacion Ontario in Buenos Aires, but we should have to decide whether we have the ARA secure the coastline and spot the cities or the Rosario Hub first. Um, coastline. Uh, we'll go there. I don't know if that's a good decision or not, but first have your plan. Even though we pursued rapid industrialization in the last decade to cope with the loss of British imports, our economy is not a part with our European examples. The Black Money Crest has shown the vulnerability department, which is likely to approve a so-called five-year plan to propel Argentina into the 20th century. Because we still have air, air stuff we could do. we got naval stuff up here as well, so... We'll see. <clears throat> FOP debacle. Failure to solve the crisis for December 9th for some drastic effects. Huh. Well, alright. Question civil rights to seize disloyal garrisons. See the defeat of their allies at Rosario and the subsequent success of our forces. Many of our former disloyal garrisons are switching sides and joining ours. Question of civil rights. Many of our supporters are convinced that we aren't rooting out the old guard efficiently enough and push for temporary restriction on the constitutional rights of our citizens. Proposals, of course, not going to be accepted by the majority of the population, but could guarantee a safer home front and avoid political or civilian opposition. You must also the state weekly stability goes down. We already don't have stability, so. I don't know, we'll see. <coughs> if we get cooed, then so be it. If we don't, that's fine. Slowly getting more support, which is not bad. Bud Coffee. <coughs> First five year plan, so Rosario has fallen. Was that supposed to be oh brought this in Buenos Aires. As a reaction to a decision to temporarily lift the constitution, oh look at this. Uh to pursue the dissenters, thousands of our citizens have flooded the Plaza de Mayo in Buenos Aires to protest these changes and proclaim the support for the old government. Well, this doesn't come as a surprise. We had, had expected the protests to rise up this quickly. This puts a serious dent in the plans to secure Argentina and Hinterland and could potentially buy the conservative forces the time they need to form an old organized organization. Um, we can teach about the conservative forces they needed. Close currency board. For most of our history, the currency board has tied the peso to a gold standard with an organ called the Calle de Confusión was tasked with maintaining the value of our currency. But with stocks plummeting and Germany taking decisive action to soften the blow, our experts have lost their competitive edge and are going to be struggling to compete with cheap Eastern European and domestic German products. Therefore, a proposal was offered to close the currency board and abandon the gold standard, letting the peso devalue and making our products therefore competitive again. Close the board? Sure, why not? Cordoba and Rosario denounce the Carl's <coughs> regime. <coughs> Excuse me. Showing an influence by the army and the remnants of the socialists that haven't fled southwards. The cities of Cordoba and Rosario have declared the government in Buenos Aires incapable of ruling Argentina and have cut all ties with the capital region and urge other states to follow suit. Conservative members of the army have announced their support for the movement and are establishing defensive positions on Rosario to counter our forces. Invoke Article 6. Invoking Article 6. The federal government may intervene in the territory of the provinces in order to guarantee the Republican form of government or repel any foreign invasion, and at the request of the constituted authorities, it may intervene in support or reestablish them, should they have been deposed by sedition or invasion from another province. Based on the rights granted to our government, as outlined in Article 6 of the Constitution, Carlos has declared the state of Cordoba incapable of ruling itself and traitors to the Argentine Republic. An intervention force shall be sent to the province to restore order and to arrest all contra revolutionaries that are refusing to accept rule from Buenos Aires. Start the campaign. I will see. Yeah. Engines of war, huh? Mendoza and Entre Rios side with Cordoba. One example is of Cordoba. The states of Mendoza and Entre Rios have been also denounced Carl's and taken the side of the military. While this is a devastating blow to our legitimacy and power in the outer provinces, the army is still too disorganized to actively pursue us. Must move quickly now. I will see. Black money sucks. Peso spirals downwards. With political insecurity in Argentina and massive economic trouble in the German Empire, peso keeps spiraling <coughs> downwards, forcing many of our old and powerful companies to close down and lay off thousands of workers. The government plans to intervene and save those without jobs by drafting them up, but in the meantime, the situation goes, the situation goes from bad to worse. Strong intervention is a necessity. Capture of Mano de Plata. As ARA approached the coast center of Mano de Plata to launch a warning salvo, they deter any military presence in the city from fighting back. The city officials surrendered to the Admiral Videla at 12 a.m. The large city is known for its beaches. To the Argentine elite has experienced an economic boom these last few years and has now wisely decided to stay out of the conflict to prevent damage to resistance or buildings. Welcome in my new Argentina. Well, I guess Paraná infrastructure plan. 
The Parana and Uruguay rivers are obstructing heavy shipping in the region and should be cleared out to allow us to further develop the other provinces and improve the connections between the urban population. Sabotage and Rosario Buenos Aires Railway. As citizens from the city of City Rosario have sabotaged a railway connection to the capital in an effort to slow down our forces and buy them more time to organize against us. Especially the station of San Nicolas was hit hard and has caused much of our planned movements to become impossible to achieve. The fall of momentum in our movement and the rising threat of an organized military opposition to Carlos has forced us to reconsider their options. The Grupo de Aficiados Unidos, while its vast control of the army has not yet chosen whom to side with, which could make them a viable asset in our struggle. Convincing them would not be easy, though, as they are easy, they're set to play an influential role in politics, and might even directly interfere in our policies both abroad and on the home front. Side with us. Ah, South American politics. Ah, uh, you gotta love it. Rapid militarization. Economic control. We didn't even do military stuff. Wow. That sucks. Yeah, coastal protection. Quick but powerful. Well, Rosario. The deal struck between the Carlos, Carlos and the GOU. Letters committed troops to our Rosario campaign and even commanded the troops to order them to stand down in Rosario and turn on the comrades in the army. <clears throat> Attacked both by the Panzers, brought in from Buenos Aires, and the traitors from within. The city could not stand up to the combined forces and surrendered formally to Pedro Pablo Ramirez, head of the GOU this evening. A great victory for the nation. Completion of the first five years planned. There are a lot of things to do. More factions than 30? We only have 21. The only to achieve this will be seen as a sign of weakness by our opposition. <coughs> by completing this, we show the world that Argentina should not be trifled with and prove our industrial prowess. Oh, absolutely. So now we can see the disloyal garrison, which would be good. Oh, we have another Marine. Yay! We have two divisions! Yay! Because we're going to need a lot of to fight Chile as well. Because they're a bunch of cineclists, and these guys are cineclists, which is not good. Not good, as we could do that, and then formation of the Carl's cabinet. Expanded railways. As a whole, our Argentina is all but secure. We can finally dedicate ourselves to establishing a loyal and efficient cabinet to assist Carl's in his reforms. What are we happy for ships? We've got some Valkyrie Harris stuff, some heavy cruisers. And some light cruisers too. Are these light cruisers? No, they have. Oh, they're, oh god, the garbage heavy cruisers. You guys are armored cruisers, which are better. Actually, you're heavy ships. God dang, our ships suck. Hmm. Barely get any every day. Eh, actually, that, that's not too bad. Yeah. Guns are okay. Even though that's pretty much the only thing we're really making here. Because that's how it was set up. I want fighters. I want some artillery as well. That would be good stuff. Um, are we making anything? Oh, we actually are. You know what? Let's grab one steel then. If we can't do anything else, get one steel from America. This way our gun production will be nice and happy. Because you never know when you're going to need more guns. Paraguay's looking okay. Not too much size. It's only... No, well, now June almost. So. <clears throat> and by everything... And China's not okay, but you know what? When is China okay, really? Union of Britain. Did they choose a way? Ah, uh, Tom Mann. Who the heck is Tom Mann? It's been a long time since they played Kajrak. Or at least it feels like it. Alright, so what are these decisions like? Project La Mesopotamia. All right, New Quen, Juji, Mendoza. So, one, two, three, four of those, 30 factories. So complete all these, which won't be too bad. Uh, we just need to unlock um, Imperial Coup. Um, oh, actually, that's really good for them. Oh, that makes it quite a bit stronger. Democratic Coalition in Algiers. I've never played the French Republic. I don't know if I ever will. We'll see. It seems kind of crazy to have them. But yeah, after this one, formation of the Carlos cabinet, which would be nice. And then uh, March on Cordoba. Actually, Mesopotamia. Well, honestly, this is more manpower, so we might want to go with Cordoba. The problem is Cordoba's always had trouble aligning with the views of the capital, Buenos Aires. As leaders of the coalition against Carlos, and due to the distance from the capital, the people of Cordoba have proven to be tough to deal with, and require specialized forces to keep it in check. Secure La Pampa. Following the defeat at Rosario, we should have sent the army to secure the Pampa's plains and rid of all American opposition. However, the Pampa's plains are one of the biggest swaths of arable land in the world, so it won't be an easy fight. The Carlos cabinet. To confirm his victory in securing the nation, Manuel Carlos has announced his cabinet picked this morning in Buenos Aires. As his Minister of Foreign Affairs, he's chosen infamous 
as Stanislaw Zeballos, whose literary works have had a profound impact on our nation, whose loyalty to the, to, to the LP goes without question. Diago Isidro Mason has been chosen to serve as Minister of Economic Affairs due to his close ties with the rest of the armed forces and to personally oversee the rapid militarization of the Argentinian war machine. As the Minister of Internal Affairs, Carlos has chosen another military manager from the form of Elbio Anaya, uh, who has played a role, an important role in the first days of the Patagonia Rebellion, but was unable to complete his task due to the failures of a superior, Colonel Hector Benigno uh, Varela. Argentina marches forward. Nice. Oh, we got more divisions too. Would you look at that? Could use more political power, but we're securing La Pampa. Consolidate uh, Mendoza. Uh, eradicate these guys. What would we do that next? Eradicate conservative stuff? Uh, or do you want demilitarized stuff? Correctus campaign, fall to command. Uh, maybe we'll do consolidate Mendoza first. Consolidate everything and then er, get rid of these guys, maybe. Famous words wine production in the region of Mendoza is a key economic and strategic area for a nation. Considering the largest and safest mountain passage towards Chile rise there, thus has to be brought back under control at all costs. Pretty much, man. Um. Fall of Tucumán. Tucumán is not a key industrial center in our nation by any stretch, but it's a city held by. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's not good. Um. Uh. Held by, held dear by Argentine patriots. <clears throat> It's a city where our Declaration of Independence from Spain was finally signed, where our country is born now. The very same city shall bear witness of a national birth when we finally take control of it. Cool. Honduras uh, in Cordoba and Mendoza. Caused by the economic recession and feeding off political insecurity in our nation, thousands of jobless citizens in the industrial cities of Cordoba and Mendoza flock to the streets to demand the government to step in and fix their crisis. Since the control of these cities is still uncontested, local police forces loyal to the army are not intervening on our behalf and attempted in an attempt to fan the flames of resistance against the regime. Send a strongly worded letter. Because that'll save everything and do everything, right? That'll do everything for us. How great. <clears throat> well, we are getting more stability, which is pretty nice, actually. Yeah, we gotta rush through this, and then we're gonna rush through all the stuff for the economic stuff. So. Cool. Start the Corrientes campaign. Uh, attention to the Paraguayans are forced to be extra careful in handling this province. A failing to do so may provoke Paraguayan aggression, especially in a time of weakness. However, Corrientes is a great way to uh, uh, Misiones. Misiones? I'm not sure how to pronounce Spanish stuff, I apologize. And thus, we refuse to surrender to these provinces to any foreign foe. Because let's be real, they're all foreign foes to us at this point. So, 14 divisions? Ooh. Uh, I'm just going to keep you like here. Because these guys are going to come try to bite us in the butt. And we're not going to appreciate that. Actually, let's wait till we get everything done first. Retake Santiago and Salta. Or, yeah, Salta. An important mining district in our main production center for the precious sugar cane. These provinces are an important uh, vessel for the economy, and it's our duty to take them from rebel hands. While they are fairly uh, underdeveloped for now, we have plans for these provinces. Time will tell if they'll come to fruition or not. Hopefully they'll come to fruition. If they're not, well, we're, we're not screwed, but we're not going to do very well, are we? <coughs> God, I love it. getting more stability. But let's eradicate conservative resistance first. As a grasp on the nation becomes uh, more strong, stronger every day, there are still those who see our regime as an offense to the Argentinian democracy and the Argentinian values, who plot in the shadows to overthrow us. Punitive actions and propaganda against these traitors should bring the population back in line to quell any possible resistance. At least we can hope. So you guys are 10 combat with. You guys are what? 17 combat with. Not bad. And three, two divisions of cavalry. So I'm going to split you guys out as well. And you guys are like, this will be like the main front. You know what, you guys would be like the main front-ish, so. Oop. Tremor, Temor Rojo. They're visiting your exports, look at that. Even though almost all social sympathizers fled the South after the FOP proclaimed its independence, some of them remained among us, waiting for their time to backstab us, and finish with the FOP start, giving us a perfect excuse to eradicate dissidents among the opposition with national security in mind. <coughs> We're visiting our exports. After the victory of the Central Powers in the Valkyrie and the fading importance of the British Empire, Argentina slowly started adjusting itself to the New World Order and increased its exports to Germany. This turned out to be the correct choice, as 1925 brought uh, with it the collapse of the British Empire and the trade network it had established. As Argentina's prime export partner and supplier of much of our needed goods, the government was forced to start a large-scale industrialization program leading to the rising social tensions in a couple of rough years or so. German investments and increasing importance on our agricultural products turned the situation back around in the 30s, leading to an economic boom and the establishment of Argentina as an economic bloc or powerhouse on the continent. 
crash of the German market, however, and the return of protectionism to the nation have catastrophically impacted our economy and severely hampered our exports. A new trade agreement will have to be signed so that we can get a guarantee from the German Empire that they'll keep exporting or importing our goods. Send their proposal. Hopefully, they don't shoot us down. We love the German Empire. We love them so much. Alright, so you guys will have to go up like here ish. These are mountains, right? Yeah, the mountains here. There's a lot of mountains over here. There's a lot of openings here, which really sucks. So, uh, we'll do these three divisions up here. And then I'm going to have you two over here, which even though you're not very good. Um, literally just guard that tile. God, that's not going to be very good for us, is it? I might actually have you guys just come by with these guys, actually. And then I'm going to have... Germany imposes harsher terms. Over a fragile situation, not willing to drag their own recovery down to assist us, the German trade ministry has <clears throat> demanded we lower the prices of our processed meat exports or face consequences by receiving higher prices on steel, tools, and consumer goods. <coughs> we are, however, not obliged to follow these demands and could perhaps strike a deal with the Entente to reduce our independence on Germany. Although the Isla Malvinas issue has not fully been resolved yet and could prove to be a British bargaining chip. Oh, well... Hmm. We are national populists. Germany won't probably intervene if we are national populists. The British probably will. Economic reinvigoration. Purge loyal op uh, loyalist opposition. As a grasp on the nation becomes stronger by the day, there are still those who see our regime as a defense of the Argentine democracy and Argentinian values, who plot on the shelves to overthrow us. Punitive actions and propaganda against these traitors should bring the population back in line and quell any possible resistance. No mercy. Limit the purges are not important enough to waste resources on them. Carlos has achieved total control of the country. Sure, why not? Pick a side in global politics. Punch Paraguay. Catholic brothers around the world. Ooh. Loyalties to Rome. Spanish immigration. Yes, please. America plan. Fallout of the American Civil War. Tighten ties with Peru. Um. Do we know which way Brazil's going? No matter what way I choose, we're probably not going to do very well, considering that I choose the right ones, but usually we get posed. Black Monday woes. Uh, hmm. Well, having the Reichsbach on our side might not be bad. Which way are the British going, do we know? <coughs> market liberals. <clears throat> well, we'll probably want to side with authoritarian Democrats over market liberals. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where they're at. And if they're going to do this or go social democrats, except, for now, my bad, but well, it is what it is. Complete political dominance. Well, in the coup, many in Argentina were afraid about the new regime's inevitable purges and violations of people's rights. These fears become real as Carl says has imposed total dominance over the country, exterminating the opposition. Yes. As they are ruling Argentina with a fire and sword. Those political powers are unlimited, but people will never forget his crimes. What do you mean? We're in power. They're not considered crimes. So now everyone else can do this. 100%? I don't think so. So you guys gotta defend. And the mountains. Yeah, you guys will do that. And you guys are gonna defend in the mountains too. Uh, who's good in defense? You put, oh, you have, I don't like that. You have that too, I don't like that. Mm. Yeah, why are you all politically connected? God dang it. Screw it, you're gonna do this. You, on the other hand, a mountain yours is nice. We're gonna dig in. How many guns do we have? 1400 is not bad. If anything, we don't have any artillery though. Which sucks. De Montena. Huh? I don't want to spare one, but eradicate social tremens. Even though almost all the social sympathizers fled after the FOP proclaimed its independence, some would still remain among us. Wait for the time to backstab us officially with the FOP start. Giving us the perfect opportunity, excuse to eradicate dissidents among the opposition with national security in mind. Limit the, pur limit the purges. All the way, my friends. All the way. Oh, look at this. Yay. Um, we have a lot of battleships. Let's go with them. So with that done, we can actually do some stuff now. Engines of war. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's not bad. Mystic stuff. That's not bad either. Uh, reduce. Yeah, probably reduce reliance on textiles. We have routinely relied on agriculture and textile products for decades, but competition with other nations have become tough, forcing us to adapt the industry to a more modern equivalent and diversify the economy. Immediate effect upon this. We lose a lot of political power in consumer goods, but we get way better stuff here. 
renegotiate with the trade partners? Oh, look at that. Oh. Argentine German trade agreement, Argentine Canadian trade agreement. Tough terms have been presented by our trade partners, but we have no choice except but if we wish to keep our economy alive. So we need all three of these, huh? Engines of war. Oh, import new because I want I want to race down here. We really got to race. Import new industrial technologies. Modern industrial methods and widespread machine usage can considerably enhance production output and reduce and quality of created products. Shift to consumer goods. Oh yes. Recent inventions like the SIM family fridge and other small appliances that are making headway on the global market and have led to increased interest worldwide in Argentinian consumer goods industry. Banco uh, Central de la República Argentina. To replace the currency board and its failure to deal with the black money crisis, a new national bank will be created in Buenos Aires to assure the nation allows to fund our state projects. And then halt the economic downturn. <clears throat> Massive state interventionism a growing war industry due to the mobilization of enable us to mitigate the effects of black money crisis somewhat. Nice. Engines of war. War is coming to Argentina, we must be prepared. As hammer strikes the metal and these factories over work over time, with Argentinian war machines taking shape, ready to meet any challenges and disperse military production. Centralizing military production could prove to be detrimental to our nation in times of war since the loss of industrial centers would mean the end of Argentina. Therefore, the planning committee has decided to spread out the manufacturers and secure supply lines even in the worst of situations. The Liga Patro uh, Patriotica fuses with the Alianza Libertadora Nacionalista. Having managed to fully complete his takeover, Carl's begun to search for allies in the Argentinian political landscape. With the early Buru coup was still very much alive in many people's memories, Carl's has started to meet with their leader, Colonel Juan Bautista Molina, in order for both organizations to come together for the future of Argentina. While many had drawn the conclusion that the Alianza Libertadora Nacionalista was going to be the Patriotic League's successor, the failure of the early Buru coup spelled disaster for the ranks, with many simply choosing to become members of both the LP and what remained of the ALN. While details of the meeting are being kept largely secret, it is theorized that Carl's intends to utilize the ALN as a de facto state paramilitary, given the, mm, that they already organized in a militarist fashion. We nationalists ought to stick together now with 65% total party popularity and we'll get even more political power. The Obelisk of Buenos Aires. To celebrate the 400th anniversary of the foundation the, of Buenos Aires by the conquistador Don Pedro de Mendoza, a colossal monument has been erected on the Plaza de la República. Sitting at the intersection of the Corrientes and Nine de Jubio Avenues, two of the Paris of South America's most lively streets, the obelisk is 235 feet tall, a testament for the ages of our capital's history. With this construction delayed by tumultuous political events of recent times, the monument was designed by the rationalist architect Alberto Prebisch and built in record time of 31 days by the German-Argentine Compañía Juno de Obras Públicas, who employed 157 workers in the construction. Over 200,000 pesos were invested in what has become one of the most important and costly architectural endeavors in the city's history. Despite the government's intention of honoring Buenos Aires' status as a nation's capital, the effort has been received with some controversy by the city's inhabitants, with many considering the building as an ugly and unappealing pole of sentiment. Regardless of the sneers and protests, we can only hope that the eventually pro porteños will come to accept this new addition to the city's patrimony. They all learn to appreciate it with due time. Immigration report in 1936. Due to the collapse of the rural economy in the wake of the Black Monday disaster and the rising tensions all over Europe, large swaths of immigrants have decided to cross the pond in search of fortune in our nation. With the USA slowly drifting into chaos, it comes as no surprise that many of these immigrants have chosen our nation as their primary destination, where they have been freely accepted as ordained at by our constitution. Welcome to... Argentina. The Reaccion Nacional de Migraciones created. In a way to avoid the 1853 Constitution's article that no Argentinian government can resist or restrict immigration, Carlos has authorized the creation of an Argentine agency dedicated to investigating and authorizing the entry of immigrants to the nation, known as the Direccion Nacional de Migraciones. While with offices being built on several hot spots of immigration like Buenos Aires, Barrios, and Puerto Iguazu. The agency will be tasked with issuing permits for the people to be allowed to work and live in Argentina. While many nationalists applaud this measure, it says it's going to add a layer of screening to the migrants who have been coming to Argentina. Many with questionable backgrounds, the opposition members have been outwardly, outwardly outspoken about the oppressive nature of said measures, with claim that they just blatant attempts at screening the Constitution. Foreign aliens won't threaten our nation anymore, and writer Horacio Quiroga commits suicide. Uruguayan-born writer Horacio Silvestra Quiroga Forteza has passed away in a hotel de Clinicas de Jose de San, de San Martin, while he's been diagnosed with a very advanced state of a prostate cancer. His death still comes a shock for the Argentinian's literary scene, as so as he chose to commit suicide before the disease could advance any further. While well, uh, Sociedad Argentina de Escritores prepares his funeral arrangements, many of his loyal fans were writing newspaper articles in commemoration of his memory as one of the region's greatest horror and tragedy writers, with some books such as Cintos de Amor, De Locura y De Muerta have now become the classics of Argentine literature. A sad end for such a brilliant writer. Introduction of Empresito Patriotico. 
I said that terribly. As the recovery attempts have only proven mildly successful and the economy is still failing, the government has announced an emprestito pat uh, patri patriotico or patriotic loan to strengthen the coffers. The first of these new tariffs is to be imposed on gasoline, with its profits being directed to the Dirección Nacional de la de Vialidad or the National Office of Public Highways. It's not bad. Um, we lose some stability, which we really don't have very much. Uh, complete political dominance. Oh boy. We can't force the people to cough up even more money. Let's go with that one. And we're going to halt the economic downturn, which, honestly, with that and tariffs, is probably honestly hurting us economically more. But whatever! Massive state interventionism in the growing war industry due to the mobilization have enabled us to mitigate the effects of the Black Monday crisis. Somewhat. And the FOP debacle. The Rio Negro has been the unofficial border between us and the rebels for years. While skirmishes occur regularly, no decisive action to solve the crisis has thus been so far successful, which we will have to basically beeline through that stuff. Increase oil production. Ooh, ooh, I like that a lot. But we have to be basically beeline through this because uh, it says failure to solve the crisis before December will have drastic consequences. We'll launch probing attacks across the Rio Negro. Victory or victory for them. Um, I did want to get that. We can support the American Union State. We can support all these guys, but whatever. I do want to do this stuff as well, because we are starting to do this, which is very good. We did grab this guy. It gives us more attack and defense for our infantry, which is very nice. Um, I don't mind getting more offense. Because we can get this guy eventually, too. But, you know, as much as I love getting more daily army XP, and that's super important, I also want more attack. Having the Marines here will be very beneficial as well. Um, anything here? Not really. I kind of want to see if we can do Unyielding Defender. He's an inflexible strategist, huh? Get more defense. We'll see. We'll see how things go. We already have partial mobilization. Well, that's not super great. We're getting a little bit more fuel. Actually, why are we getting more fuel? Are we stop training? No? What would you all repair? Go home. Repair. Um, of course, we'd want to help the economic downturn, which would be good. But, you know, whatever. It's just an economic downturn. That's all. That's all, right? That's all. Uh, complete de political dominance. Good, God. Well, I don't know if we can fix that or not. So what is it done here? Strive for autarky. Attract foreign manufacturers. In all honesty, it seems like probably autarky is the way we're going to go. Export to South America. Downturn halted. That's not bad. Middle European Panzer deal. That's not bad either. But I have to be in a faction with them. In case European exports, that's not too bad too. Democracy prevail, prevails, no one cares. Uh, war profiteering. German Empire must be a war. Okay, well. Foreign manufacturers. BMW tanks. Fokker planes. That sounds like fun. Oh, who can you choose here? Got a proponent. Production cluster cruisers. That's not bad. Geopolitical stuff. That's not bad either. Pretty good at one cook. That's not bad, but we're not those factions, so. Medical experts. That's not bad, too. Um, human rights lawyer? No thanks. This gentleman's very good because you can actually get two more operative slots, which is very cool, actually. We and Buddhist, it's nice. So we can think about that. Over here, like I said, I want more stuff. Uh, empowered executive. Cannot be replaced. Juan Cook is pretty good. Anything here? Ooh, that's not bad, too. YPF? That's not bad either. Oh, what is this? Research speed, research speed, civilian intelligence. It's not bad either. We got some different, slightly unique stuff here. Interesting. I'm not sure what to spend our PP on, though. Uh, actually, not terrible guns? Good! Because we're making a slight bit of arty. Ooh. Um, let's do it with the German Empire. Cool. Get some more construction speed because we will need some more extraction. For now, let's go ahead and do that one too. You know what? Screw it. Just do them all right now. Costs a lot of that, but whatever. It's fine. You've got to hope we can do okay here. Uh, Marine-wise, you got to be a little thicker than this. Nope, I guess not. We're only making the really crappy ones because they should be able to hold out. I mean, it's only five battalions. Maybe not. It is mountains, though, so yeah. Actually, we had enough for that. No, that's, not, that's not bad. There are four divisions guarding this too, though, so that will help out definitely. Three thousand guns still good to have that. I can help the economic downturn, which is good. FOP debacle. Good God, hope we can win. Mobilize reserves. It's not bad. Build up defenses. Fleet exercises. Build up defenses. 
Our southern borders are unprepared for any FOP counterattack and should be reinforced before we attempt any offensive actions. Uh, we will still have some leftover forts in the time when President Roca had to deal with the raiding Mapucha savages, so it's modernizing would be a wise choice. I will be doing a raiding attack, so. Now we're getting enough fuel, which is actually pretty nice. So we have 17 here from La Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia. We will be able to steal, and getting that steel down there would be very good, too, so we don't have to import it from anybody else. Uh, this one's just going to take a lot of time. Mm. Not Puerto Rico. Yeah, this is going to take a lot of time. So we're using one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight factories. We're getting all that stuff done will be very good. Um, getting rid of the Black Monday uh, effects will be good. I think having more than 30 factories, I mean, that'll be not too difficult. So, not bad. Not great, of course. But not bad. And we still haven't done this stuff, but whatever. We'll get there. From shore to sh shining shore. Hey, that's not bad. Strike now. Hopefully we can just move in and strike quickly. Now, that being said, we have to do this with the Southern Syndicalist Alliance. So, yeah. Dutch do love their elections, huh? 37. Got some more output if you can, too. Now we'll make some infantry. Make th make some infantry. Make some infantry. Uh, I would like more attack, but I want to wait to see because they, they some of these guys are not too not too thin. Some of those guys are pretty darn good. But just in case, it's June first, and we will see what happens with this whole debacle. Victory on Rio Negro. Oh, save now then. The Southern Rebels and the Chilean backers now demand we withdraw from the river. After recent border tensions escalated between the forts of Argentine Army and the FOP militias, even though we may not have gained any territorial concessions in the struggle, the action has been a great boost for our morale as our people realize that the enemy is not prepared for full invasion. Onwards to final victory. They get defeat? Good. Uh, mobilized reserves? The time for war is coming. Nations all around the Southern Cone are mobilized before it deemed to be unpreventable now. Argentina has captured a lot, or acquired a lot of map power in the last 50 years with the open immigration policies. So we mobilize faster than rivals, we may gain the upper hand. Look for allies. While the Argentine army is full of formidable force, it may be wise to look for allies and neighbors who share the same distrust for socialists in Brazil. Fleet exercises, careful positioning, guaranteeing of supply lines, prevail, or prove vital when it comes to blows with the Chilean navy and strike now. All diplomacies failed, the moment to strike now has arrived. And now, we're going to strike and uh, see what happens. Hopefully we do okay. No, we can't do anything here for now. Rapid militarization would be pretty nice. Um, so that'd be pretty good, but we did do read about this before, so we're gonna do this one first and then disperse military production. Yeah, why not? Centralizing military production could prove to be detrimental in our nation in times of war since the loss of our industrial centers would mean the end of Argentina. Ooh, Germany, yes. Uh, therefore, the plan and committee has decided to spread out the manufacturers and secure supply lines even in the worst situations. Now, I'm hoping here. Is there a river here? It's, it's impossible to tell. It looks like there's a river. I think it is a river. There's a river, so I'm gonna send you and you. Could you do this? Would that be possible? With air superiority. At all. Honestly, just... I want to just go right there and do that. Chilean Argentinian War. They're going to give us stuff. Prepare for war. We've received numerous reports that Paraguayan troops are currently massing and there's a great deal of reconnaissance that's taking place across Argentinian border. Oh boy. Military official says it's pretty clear Paraguay is planning an invasion of Argentina. One that could begin any time within the next couple weeks. Well, crap. Um, we might have to use... Not not good stuff uh, to prepare for all that stuff. Um, but we will see when we get there. Ooh, I guess you. Can we actually win here? If not, well, we gotta push here then. Keep him pinned. Creation of La Junta Nacional de Granos. Operating as our national grain board, then. What? What happened to my divisions here? JNG will buy wheat, flax, and corn from struggling farmers for prices established by our government. Through this panel, we can secure a fair price for our farmers while backing them up while we again hit our buy recession using the means of the exchange fund under Banco de la Nación. Some of the government, however, would prefer expanding the panel drastically and also secure a price for industrial and all gearing goods. The liberals, however, see this as a direct attack on the free market and are urging the government to stop these policies before it's too late. Board regulate all goods? Because why not? And here we are at currently, everybody, October 14th. And I'll be very honest here. I had to use some severe cons commands to even attempt to win this war. Argentina is basically impossible to play as. I'm sure someone in the world can play and do very, very well without using cons commands. But that's not me or this channel. Because fighting 
the Patagonians, as well as trying to fight the Chileans, as well as trying to fight the Paraguayans, well, you kind of get screwed over because you just don't have enough divisions. You literally don't have enough of anything to do anything here. So, unfortunately, I had to use some severe cons, cons commands to make sure that we can actually have a fighting chance. And even with Bolivia in the war, it does nothing. I'm having Bolivia does literally nothing for us. So, I think this is old content back from back and back back in the olden days of like Kaiserreich, but it's definitely use an update because it is not. I mean, not everything needs to be balanced super well, but like. I, I, I don't recommend this. I, this is why I never play South America. It's god-awful fighting down here. You don't have enough divisions. You're on l literally three fronts. And basically, Chile is... And I, I deleted their divisions, to be honest with you. Like, they'd have roughly slightly less divisions than we would have. But even then, like, they just bust through our divisions like crazy. Like, it, it's... This is so stupid, it's not even funny. But, you know, whatever. This is this super old content. But, rapid militarization. After Carlos's coup... Uh, the military was in chaos. Now that we have the country back under control, we must rapidly rebuild our military capabilities. If they rebuild a glor once glorious army, our neighbors might assume that they can take over rightful Argentine territory. Yeah, Argentina is not worth playing. Someone else use cons commands because I mean, yeah, we got German volunteers supposedly. We've got supposedly French and uh, uh, Canadian volunteers. They do nothing. They're garbage. But when the enemy, the AI, has volunteers, oh, they do great. They do fantastic. It's ridiculous how well they do. So, uh, this is not very much fun. But that's why I end up using Consequence a whole bunch nowadays. Because a lot of this is just not fun. Um, but yeah, I can't recommend Argentina. You have to use Consequence. And I'd love to see a campaign where people don't use Consequence or something like this. But, you know, I'd love to see the devs do this. I'd love to see them do it. Because I, I I had to delete um, the FOP's divisions. Because some of them were fucking 40 combat width. How do they get 40 combat with infantry and fully supply them? It doesn't make any sense. I mean, in what world does that make any sense at all? It, there's no world like that. Especially being like, literally like, a quarter of our size with 300,000 men, 330,000 people in total. Does it make sense? Of course not. But this is old legacy content. The Kaiserreich like devs do have a red bias, but whatever. Um, but yeah, this is... And we have to finish within this by December, so I might have to use more cons commands because we have to finish this so fast if we want to get that without getting penalized. So, is Argentina worth playing? No, no, unfortunately not. Not at the time of this recording. So, um, but we'll keep trying to push and trying to do okay. I mean, like I said, if I have to use cons commands, so be it. Like right now, if we have to, so be it. You know what? It's only it's only men. Twenty thousand losses. Twenty thousand losses. Yeah, whatever. It's guys are right. It's not meant to be balanced at all. Um, we're going to say, uh, very good. sure, why not? We can do that. Yeah, infinite strength. Infinite strength Chile. I just don't know how to supply 40 combo with divisions. In what world does that make sense? Without cheating, of course, without cheating. And Bolivia, I mean, that's a joke, having Bolivia join the war. It really is. Do the devs even test this? Two to ten divisions. How is that supposed to be fair? Especially, I mean, yeah, Paraguay doesn't have a lot, but that's a third front against basically. If you combine Chile and these guys, basically equal our strength. But even they're even more strong than us because you know they have forty combat with divisions somehow. Go figure. But La Vina Dam construction. And further further with Cordoba's industrialization process, the local administration proposed the construction of a large hydroelectric installation and not only power the region's evolving industry, but also provide irrigation for thousands of acres of agricultural land. The province's main economic engine. Construction is expected to take at least five years, but with an appropriate government support, it might be greatly reduced by an additional expense. That's okay. Go ahead and do that. Um, we did that one. Need more factories, of course. And Black Monday no longer playing play us. Argentinian war plan. Begun between Socialist Chile and Patagonia on one side, and Argentina on the other. And Paraguay, apparently, too. The joints of plan, battle plans to smash our enemy. We must move quickly to succeed. The success blow to Patagonian workers front and quickly enough will seriously disable the revolutionaries. Without doing this within a certain amount of time, when aborted, failure, when selected. I mean, it doesn't even matter. I mean, this is crap. I mean, this is complete crap, so. Uh, but we gotta continue cheating to make sure we can actually do this correctly. After using basically cons commands to win the war, because there's no other way to do it, our armies have finally taken control of the Paraguayan capital and can occupy the territory of the former state of Paraguay. We should now decide how to set up a comp competent administration in the area. Liberate them? Screw that. The fate of Chile. After a long campaign across hostile Chilean Andes, we finally managed to shatter Chilean defenses. Santiago's now in our hands. We must decide in the future. Well, if the devs want to cheat, there we go, too. I'm just going to use 
Just annex him. I don't care at this point. I really don't care. <sighs> gotta love it. Just gotta straight up love it. Um, so I guess at this point, I might as well do that guy. And might as well do recovery. Sure, why not? A lot of army stuff here. Capital ships, air, superiority. Um, I can't... Well, I guess we could focus on air stuff here, too. Hmm. Naval reformer. Let's go with that guy. Air superiority is pretty good to get to. Fade Northern Chile. Countess said, region of Northern Chile has brought, been brought under control as troops occupy the region. We must know what to decide to do with it. Um, give it to Bolivia. Give it to Peru. Split between Peru and Bolivia. Hmm. We did have a friendship, so split between them two. There you go. They can have, they can deal with that. I don't want to. Uh, from short to shiny short, and reintegrate Patagonia. The Patagonian rebellion has been terminated at last, and the reintegration of the Atlantis will prove to be a tricky task for government. While the Patagonian population is completely exhausted, they will still prove to be a thorn in our side unless we take drastic action. Pretty much. Um, so, if we have to cheat at this point, like, a bunch of crap. We have to. Uh, what is this? Collins holds on. Well, that's nice. Infrastructure, infrastructural expansion, not bad. Confederate states of the River Plate. Now you get, now you get population. What the heck? Argentinian jingoism. I mean, it wasn't a huge issue earlier, but like five percent. Why? Why not before? Syndicals men have been showing their place, and the Argentine state rule supreme. Time now comes to rally the people of the Southern Cone and unite them into the Catholic Federation under a wing. There's some, there's some, some choices here that five percent. It, in my opinion, if we have to fight the FOP, it makes more sense to break up that 5% into like smaller chunks. Maybe 1% or 2% if we have to fight the FOP, the Patagonian Workers Front. It makes more sense to fight like, get 2% more, we rally to our defenses, rally to the offense, and then eventually have the idea of a, a Confederate States of the River Plate, and then we add another 2%, throw in a 1% somewhere else if you really want that 5%. I don't like that. I just randomly get 5% more. That doesn't make any sense to me. But then again, I'm just a guy online who complains a lot. Complains a lot. But from shore to shining shore, from the Atlantic to the Pacific, our army stands supreme. Like San Martin before our time, we've crossed the Andes and delivered the killing blow to our enemy. That's clearly a great day for Argentina and therefore the world. Uh, Islas Malvinas naval expansion. While they prove to be a strategic location for our fleet, the Islas Malvinas are most, uh, mostly a symbol for Argentine patriotism and further expanding the facilities will show our people the world and the world that the Armada stands armed and ready for any possible invasions. Eradicate syndicalist insurgents. As the agents work on eradicating Chilean resistance to the regime change, internally the secret forces are working overtime to ensure a united and socialist free Argentina. Reduce reliance on foreign equipment. Tanks, planes, guns, and so much more are being imported from abroad with limited domestic manufacturing. If we're to stand up to the other powers of the world, we need to start bringing this production home. FN Investment Program. To further provide the necessary arms for a growing army, the government has announced a program to create and fund the Fabricaciones Militares, capable of providing our army with all the small arms they need. Eradicate military cliques. The ar army isn't a homogeneous <clears throat> structure. Instead, there are many different arrival and cliques dividing it. If we should render our army more efficient, we'll have to eradicate these cliques before the pointless power struggles and schemes weaken our army structure. And uh, this one. Modernized equipment. While our will is strong, we should nonetheless be keeping our equipment up to date. With both the strong will of our soldiers and modern weapons, we are one step closer to rebuilding the glory of our army. But that's all the time we have for today. And I need to take a break from this because it shows you the lack of insight put into Argentina. But, regardless, if you enjoyed the video, of course, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow, and uh, in which we'll try to see what else is in store for, well, Argentina. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.